Welcome again. Here the session is on strain and stress measurement. So first we will see the definitions of stress and strain. You already know the stress is the force per unit area and it is given as sigma A is equal to F by A. And the strain is nothing but the ratio of increasing length to original length. When the stress is applied to a body, it will have a, some elongation or contraction or changing dimensions. So that changing dimension to original dimension is the strain. So the strain is given as delta L by L, that is the changing length by original length. How the strains are measured? So the strain is measured by from its definition only because it is delta L by L. So L we know and if we could measure delta L, we can simply calculate what is the strain. So that is the uh, theory behind uh, uh, behind the strain measurement. And it is explained here. This one uh, you already have studied. We know that the strain is related to stress through a constant known as Young's modulus. It is uh, a property of a material, property of materials. So material to material, this Young's modulus may change. So, so E is given as uh, stress divided by strain. The another term uh, important in this strain and stress measurement is Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio nu. So Poisson's ratio is given as the ratio between uh, linear strain, lateral strain divided by linear strain. So this one is also keep it in mind for while we are doing the uh, strain and stress calculations. Let us consider an example of a square block which is subjected to two stresses in this direction it is a sigma x and in this direction it is sigma y so uh, directly we can't calculate the sigma x and sigma y so first we will determine the strain in that x direction and y direction so sigma x is uh, given by this expression sigma x minus nu sigma y by e and uh, strain in y direction that is epsilon y is provided uh, by this equation sigma y minus nu sigma x divided by e Young's modulus so from uh, this is the expression from this expression uh, we can derive the equations for sigma x that is stress in x direction and stress in y direction so from here we can tell that we have to determine or we have to find the strain first using some gauges uh, we have to determine the strain from that strain if we are knowing the strain we can calculate the stress so from the previous slide we know that we have to measure the strain first so if we know the strain we can have stress we can calculate the stress using the equations so uh, in this portion we are concerned about the strain measurement so strain measurement various uh, methods we are using first one is x sensor meters so these are uh, available in two types optical and mechanical type and then uh, next is the electrical strain gauge types these are available in resistive that is the most commonly used then capacitive inductive photoelectric uh, in our syllabus we have to study about strain measurement by electrical resistive strain gauges so only this area we are concentrating on this area so an electrical resistance strain gauge uh, in 1856 lord kelvin demonstrated that the resistance of copper wire and iron wire changes when the wires are subjected to mechanical strain so that is a property of uh, materials to change its resistance with respect to change in length and change in cross section this slide is included as uh, for reference your reference purpose so how the resistance is getting affected a resistance of a material is getting electric resistance of a material is getting affected by the uh, length and the cross sectional area so in that uh, they are used an analogy of uh, say uh, it is the electric electricity is flowing current is flowing through a resistance oh sorry a wire uh, that is we can have we can construct an analogy that a water is flowing through a pipe so we know that if the length of pipe is more 
the resistance offered by the pipe surface to the flow is more so that is the resistance will be more with respect to the length uh, another uh, we can tell that if the diameter of the pipe is bigger the resistance will be lesser and the diameter of the pipe is lesser the resistance will be more so it is the same case for the electrical resistance if the length of uh, conductor or the wire is increasing its resistance will increase uh, in at the same time if the diameter of the wire is increasing resistance will decrease and the diameter is decreasing resistance will increase so we are making use of this change in resistance with respect to change in uh, length or dimension is making use to make a strain gauge so a strain gauge is an example of a passive transducer that converts a mechanical displacement into change in resistance so a strain gauge is only measuring the change in length otherwise the displacement that is again calibrated to give the strain of that component here we have used a word passive transducer so that is actually explained in the last module that is the classification of transducer like passive transducer and active transducer active transducers are one which is capable of generating its own electricity uh, a small emf it will produce that emf is make used for uh, measurement purpose example is uh, piezoelectric materials but here we are using uh, the strain gauges are made passive transducers passive transducer means we need an external uh, means to energize the system some batteries are required to supply the electricity to the system so in the figure we can see that the strain gauge is a thin wafer like a device and uh, this device can be attached to the materials whose strain has to be measured these are some pictures of uh, use of strain gauges how it is attached to the metal surface most time mostly these are glued to the surface the resistor strain gauges are further classified as unbonded and bonded the unbonded resistance strain gauges are uh, nothing but uh, in this the electric the wires uh, which are used to measure the strain are not bonded to the fixed base fixed base is separate and the wires are separate wires are actually connected with some pins on the surface and two pins will be on the surface of the material to be uh, measured and the other to be on the fixed base then the fixed base is fixed to the uh, glued to the work surface so the wire and fixed base has got no connection it is unbounded and this uh, here in this figure we can see that we are using four uh, resistance r1 r2 r3 and r4 so r1 r2 r3 and r4 are connected as a v stone bridge circuit and a potentiometer is used to measure the uh, potential difference between these resistance and initially if r1 r2 r3 r4 are uh, all are equal uh, since these all are equal the initial reading will be zero there is no potential difference between these two points but because of this elongation uh, the resistance of uh, these resistance will be become unequal and the at unequal resistance will be shown as a change in emf in the potentiometer next is bonded resistance strain gauges so in this case uh, actually this electrical wire uh, is wire grid is in uh, actually uh, placed in between two thin sheets thin sheets of paper or plastic and uh, this will be cemented to form as a single unit and this old unit is bonded to the surface of the material to be tested so these are known as uh, bonded strain gauges so most of the strain gauges used uh, nowadays are of bonded type so the bonded resistance strain gauges are further classified as one wire type strain gauge foil type strain gauge semiconductor or piezo resistive strain gauges so in wire type strain gauges uh, they are making use of uh, wires of dia 25 microns foil type 
uh, in that case the wire diameter is 5 microns and the another type is semiconductor or piezo resistive strain gauges here the structure of a strain gauge so the structure of a foil type strain gauge is shown in this figure so because the majority of strain gauges are foil types uh, so they operate in the principle that the foil is subjected to stress the resistance of the foil changes in a defined way so this resistance changes is uh, we are making use to measure the strain and in working we already discussed that we are using a v-stone bridge so either one of the resistance is replaced with a strain gauge or all can be replaced with a strain gauge so the change in resistance with respect to the change in uh, elongation of the member is uh, deflected as a change in voltage by the potentiometer and this change in voltage we are making use or uh, otherwise we are calibrated to get the value of the strain next is an important term related with the strain gauges that is gauge factor so the gauge factor is an indication of the sensitivity of strain gauge so gauge factor is expressed with the letter k and the k is given by delta r by r that is unit change of resistance with the unit change of length so this is the uh, expression for gauge factor and the next one the gauge factor is related to poise ratio by k is equal to 1 plus 2 mu see here the poison ratio is mu earlier we given us new okay so not this change you can refer this slide for further uh, details on gauge factor so various advantages and disadvantages of uh, strain gauges so advantages uh, most com uh, important points are these are so the the there is no moving parts uh, and that is relative moving parts are absent so the life is very high then it is small and inexpensive it is a very small thing and very inexpensive and disadvantages are its characteristics are non-linear so it need to be calibrated see all we already discussed that the strain gauges are actually measuring the displacement so this displacement measurement can be used for other applications so especially for finding the residual stresses vibration measurement force measurement torque measurement bending and deflection measurement compression and tension measurement along with the strain and stress measurement this is an example how a strain gauge or two strain gauges are used to measure a force see this one is a member a cantilever member and the force is applied at the tip so it will subject it to bend uh, we will glue two strain gauges one is over the member and one is under the member so the uh, strain gauge which is red in color will subject it to tension and the uh, another one uh, it is in blue which is subjected to compression so for the red strain gauge the resistance will increase for the blue the resistance will decrease so it will be connected in a v-stones bridge in this manner so the change in resistance will be uh, represented by a change in emf in this potentiometer shortly i will upload a quiz assignment on this portion uh, maybe three or four, uh, four or five questions. Uh, kindly answer and submit it. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will meet on next class. Thank you.